So welcome you all in learning Python. We are about to start our journey with Python. So we are about to start our journey with Python. We had a uh, session, a webinar on Geeks for Geeks, where we discussed that why you should start your journey with Python actually. So uh, if you want to see that why we should start with Python, you can go through that session on uh, Geeks for Geeks channel on YouTube, right? So without wasting much of your time, I'll just share my screen with you all. So this is uh, a brief, what we will be discussing in this session, we'll see why you should go for programming, then why you should be selecting Python for programming only. Then we'll write our first program. Then we'll see what is the importance of comments, why we should be using comments in our programming wh when we are using them, and what are the different types of errors that can be encountered. So let's start, see if, you want to develop, if you want to make your career in any of these fields, I'm showing you some of the fields. If you want to make your career in some of these fields, in any of these fields, like we talk about robotics. So you have seen that companies are developing robots, uh, which are which can actually replace humans on certain, for performing certain tasks, right? So these robots can perform those tasks and can execute those instructions only because uh, of certain piece of code which has been embedded into them. Then we have seen the self-driving cars that the, the driverless cars can move from source to destination. We, uh, they can decide on their own that when to apply brakes, when to take turns, they can decide on their own, right? This all is possible because of this, again, certain piece of code which has been embedded into their chips, right? We have seen health and care sectors, the advancements in health and care, care sectors recently. There are machines which can see, uh, go through your reports, which can scan your reports and can diagnose the disease that you are going through, right? And they can also give you prescriptions. Again, we talk about gaming industry. Gaming industry is also a very big industry if you want to be in game development. So whenever your player moves a step forward, there is certain piece of code which is executing behind it. So if you want to uh, have some hands-on experience in gaming industry, then again, you should be learning programming. Movies we have seen have got those animations and effects which were not there in the uh, earlier uh, movies, uh, the earlier era. Uh, the modern movies have those animations and effects. So if you want to uh, see those effects if you want to be in this movie industry and want to develop those effects and animations again you have to use the tools and the softwares which has been developed through programming only and last one website and application websites and if you want to be a web developer or mobile application developer then programming is must for you now the question is that uh okay so I'll talk about certain terms that are regularly used when we talk about programming. After it, we'll see why, which technology we will be using for programming. So here we have a computer. This computer represents actually a computing device. It can be your desktop, it can be your laptop, or it could be some mobile that you are still holding, right? So if I say, we have a computer or a computing device. This computing device can perform certain instructions. So we give them certain instructions. These computing device cannot do anything on their own. They need certain instructions to be uh, taken. Then only they are able to perform that task, right? We all know this, but we don't give them single instruction at a time. We write a batch of instructions. We write a set of instructions and give them to the computer that after performing this instruction, uh, you do this after performing and after completing that you have to, this next task is in the queue that the computer needs to accomplish. So we always give a set of instructions to the computer and this set of instruction is called the program. 
So program is generally a set of instructions that is given to a computer and computer executes those instructions line by line, right? And these programs can be written by the experts we have. We generally call them programmers. So programmers are the people who can write the programs or the set of instructions for the computer. And these set of instructions are then executed by the computer. Now the question is, why can't everyone write the instructions for the computer? Why we need certain experts only? Why we need these programmers only for giving instructions to our computer? Now I'll help you. I'll explain you with the help of an example, right? Suppose you are the one who understands only English and I am giving you instructions in Hindi, right? So you understand only English. I'm giving you instructions in Hindi. Would you be, would you ever be able to execute the task that I'm that I'm asking you to do? Tell me. You can never accomplish the task because you won't understand what I am asking you to do, right? And if I want you to get the task accomplished, if I want to you to get this th get this thing done for me, I should give you instructions in your language only. That's why here we have programming languages. Right. So programmer knows certain programming languages that could be understood by the computer and they write the instructions in these programming languages only. Then computer understand this programming language or the instructions given by the programmer and executes them. Right. Computer does not understand every language. There are certain programming languages that a computer can understand. And that's why we need programmers who can write or who can write programs in this particular programming language. Now the question is, which programming language should I select? Right? There are, there are a lot of programming languages in the market and which programming language should I select? So you might be seeing the voting link in the description of this uh, YouTube video, right? So you just go through the click on that voting link and uh, select any five languages, programming languages that you have heard of, right? We can see the results over here. Just go there and select the programming language that you have heard of, any five programming languages that you have heard of. It's not like you, you don't have to have that knowledge of those programming languages, just the names. If you have heard of any of those programming languages, you can take the, that particular programming language. You have to click, click the voting link in the description and you can select the programming language. Right. That's fine. See. We have seen majority, you can see here, majority of the programming languages that we have is Python, C, C++, HTML, Java. These all, all, the, all are the terms that you have heard of, right? And we have other languages like C Sharp, JavaScript, and Scala, PHP, all these languages are there. But, and we have heard of all these programming languages. Now, when you are sitting over there, and I'm telling you that you need to learn programming, and for that, for learning programming, you should know a certain programming language. Then there is a confusion in our mind that there are a lot of programming languages in the market. I've heard of many programming languages in the market, right? Now, which programming language should I select? Which programming language should I select so that my career would be easy? I don't have to switch on uh, different programming languages for uh, accomplishing different tasks, right? So I will be telling you Although we have discussed this thing in very details uh, in the session that we had earlier, that why you should be starting your programming journey with Python. But still, I will be telling you the four basic points that why you should be selecting Python again, right? First thing is Python is very popular. If you see this graph and you see this uh, growth of popularity of Python from 2014 or 2013, so you can see the exponential growth in uh, 
the community of the Python programming language. This actually means if you have any trouble, if you are stuck anywhere with Python, so there are a lot of people who can support you, who are there to solve your problem. So with growing community comes the great help, so or in great ideas also. So you can think of uh, solving the next problem in Python language because there are a lot of people who are there to support you when you will stuck or when you will be uh, finding some errors which can't be fixed. So there are is a wide community. Python is very popular. First reason is this. Second reason is Python code is easy which speeds up the development. I can explain it in a way, right? Python code is very close to English language. So it is very easy for us to understand the Python lang Python as a language and start, uh, start implementing our logic, which actually says that if you uh, the learning curve of Python is very small. Le by small learning curve means you can uh, rapidly, you can quickly uh, grasp the concepts of Python and start implementing them into logics, right? So that's why the small learning curves make it again a, our a favorite programming language to be selected for development. Next is reading Python code is intuitive, making maintenance a breeze. Again, I can explain you this in very simple words like all of us know that in the company or whenever uh, a company is developing a software, there is no single developer who is developing it. There are multiple developers or a team of developers that work on a single piece of software, right? Now you think, suppose I have uh, written some piece of code of a software and after that I left the company. Now, if someone else is uh, able, uh, now if, if it is difficult for someone else to understand my code, then he won't be able to make the updations in my code, right? That's why we say the intuitiveness of Python, the easy to understanding of the, the Python is because easy to understand, easy to be read, makes it easier to be maintained because the chain, the code written by me can be updated by someone else very easily, right? If it is difficult for someone else to understand my code, then it, it will be very difficult for them to make changes in my code. That's why with Python, maintenance is very easy. Again, Python gives you tried and tested scalability. Scalability, I can explain. I can explain you with uh, very uh, simple, in very simple terms. Like, suppose you might have seen the applications or the softwares or the websites when they uh, are just when they just enter into the market. There are very few people those who are using it, using that application or website, right? When few people are using that application or website, it is per it performs very well. But as with time, as the user base increases for that website or that application, the number of users using that application increases. The performance of that particular application degrades. In that case, we can say that the application or the website was not scalable. That means it didn't scale with the number of users. As the number of users increase, the performance decreases. That's why we say that, that that particular website or application was not scalable. This is what is the actual meaning of scalability is. Now, because Python is being used by YouTube, Reddit, and Eve Online, these are these are just exam few examples. There are Google is also using Python for some of its uh, products, right? So we can say these. Uh, companies or these products, these soft, these websites are actually using Python and are handling. We know that the, the volume of users they are handling. So with Python, we are assured that the scalability is there. We can uh, develop the applications which can handle the large number of users, right? So I think these four points are uh, enough to kick you that you should start your programming career with Python only. So we have discussed a lot that why you should be learning programming, why you should be learning programming with Python only. We have seen this, but now it's time to actually start programming with Python. And before starting programming, 
we need we should be able to install the python uh, install python on our systems right so if you are using linux based system ubuntu and uh, or if you are using mac uh, system then you don't have to worry about installation of python because it's already there i'll tell you how you can use it but if you are using windows system then you need to use uh, you need to uh, download the python first and install it on your system so i'll tell you how you can do this so we'll go to the browser where you can simply type python download when you type python download you will see a link from official website of python which is python.org right and when you this is the official website of python you can go there on the download page and here you will see a button with download python 3.9.1 after clicking when you click on this button the download will start and you will start and when this download is completed and you click on this it will start installing because i already have python it is giving me upgrade now option but when you will try to install it it will give you install now option right and i can show you how it will be for you when you download this it will give you this install now option you have to click this install now option but before clicking this one thing you need to ensure is there you will see two check boxes install launcher for all users and add python the version that you are installing to path right you need to check this uh, check box before clicking this install now option so when you click when you check this add now python after that you will click on and see you have to check this and then you have to click install now option right then you will see that python will install right and when this is successfully accomplished then you can verify whether python is installed on your system or not by typing IDLE over here. So IDLE stands for Integrated Development, uh, Integrated Development and Learning Environment. IDLE stands for. So it provides your complete environment for learning Python, right? So when you type IDLE, it will show you that IDLE app has been installed. It will show you the Python version, right? So when you double, when you click on this, it will launch IDLE, and you can see this is Python shell. where you can actually type the python commands right so if i type some or something 2 plus 3 over here it will give me some value so this is actual the python shell where i can run any valid python command and i can execute those commands and see the outputs on this shell only right but i won't be using this shell right i will be telling you the way with the help of which you can write the python code anywhere on or on any system right you don't have to worry about whether you are working on windows you are working on a linux based system or you are working on mac based system you don't have to worry about any of the operating system right so what you can do is i am closing it here right now so i will need a editor for writing my code so editor could be a notepad plus plus you can use you can use sublime you can use atom i am using atom here so this is simply a editor where i can type my code right so i can actually type it is simple editor just like notepad notepad plus plus where i can type my code so you will find these this editor on all the systems right uh you can download atom on your windows on linux ubuntu or on mac mac also so everywhere you will see the same interface of atom right now what i need to do is first thing that we need to do what i uh, i i'll do is i'll go to desktop here i create a new folder i'll keep all my python files in this folder only so let me do it so it becomes very easy for me to maintain all the codes so i am creating a folder python code i'll create all my files in here only so I, when i've created this i have launched the atom here i'll go to file i'll open this folder over here 
I'll go to open folder option and on my desktop, on my desktop, I have Python code folder. I'll select this folder. You can see when I click this, it does not contain any file, right? So what I need to do is I'll create a new file inside this folder. So I'll right click on this folder and select new file. Then I'll create a new file because we need to create Python code, Python source code files. So we can give any name. Suppose I'm giving here demo, but my file name extension should be dot py. So I'll say dot py. So whenever you'll create any file which will contain the Python source code, it should have the extension .py. So I'm creating a file which is demo. Name could be any name, but the extension has to be .py. So I'm writing demo.py. All right. Now I want to print the sum of suppose two plus three over here, which I did over here on the shell. So I want to print the sum of two plus three. So I'm printing print. And inside this print, this print has double brackets. These brackets inside this print, I'm passing two plus three. Sorry, it has to be two plus three, right? So I've written print two plus three. So after, whenever you write anything, you make any change in the file, you have to save it by pressing Control S, or we can go to this file option. Here we can see the save option. I can save this file. So what I've done is I have created a file with extension .py. I have written my code over here. It's a simple piece of code where I'm printing the sum of two plus three. And then I have saved this file. Now I know I need to open command prompt. On Windows, you will open command prompt. Or on Linux or Mac based system, you will open the terminal. Right? When I open the command prompt or terminal, I can actually, I need to type Python. See, okay. Before this, I need to go to the path on which my, I have saved my file. So because right now I am at C in C drive, I'm in users and push folder. I need to go to desktop because on desktop, I created that folder. So I'll go to desktop. Then I'll go to the Python codes folder. So right now I am inside my Python code folder. I can check whether the file created uh, by me that was demo.py exists over here or not. So if it is Windows system, you can type dir. Or if you are on Py, uh, Linux based or Mac based system, if you are on the terminal, you can type ls. Right? So if I can see that I have a file demo.py inside this Python fo code folder because of, with the help of dir, I can check this. Or if you're on Linux based system, you can simply type ls like this. I hope you got this. When you type ls, you will again see the listing that there is demo.py that exists over there. Now what I need to do is I need to run this file. So I'll type python and the name of the file that is demo.py. So python is actually the name of interpreter which will be executing this file demo.py. So I write Python demo.py. When as soon as I, I press enter, you will see it is printing the result that is two plus three. So I asked my uh, in demo.py, I asked Python to print two plus three. And when I run this, I execute this thing with the help of command Python. Then I pass the file, which file is there that is demo.py. It has given me the instructions, the result of the instruction that I mentioned over here, which was print two plus three and it has printed five. Can you see this? So it is very simple way you will create file with extension dot py. And after that, you will save that file, whatever code you write into it. After that, you will save it. And then you open the command prompt or terminal. Okay. One thing to note over here is when you are using Linux based system, you will type Python three, right? Because uh, both the versions of Python are installed on a system, Python two and Python three. And by default, when you type Python, it uses the Python two version. 
so to you because we will be working on python 3 version it is the latest version and we will working on python 3 version only so on linux or mac based system you will be typing python 3 demo.py right or for windows you can simply type python demo.py right so when i save this program i open the command prompt or terminal i go to that particular path where i've stored my file and then I can simply give Python and the name of the file and it uh, when I press enter, I'll see the output of whatever I written in my, in my file. It is printed on the screen. I hope this is clear to you. I hope this is making sense. Okay. Let's move ahead. So what I'm doing is I have installed Python. I'm showing you here only. So I won't be switching. Uh, again and again to this command prompt. I have command prompt installed over here also. So I will type over here and I'll show you the output over here only. So this is same thing uh, when you go to Python, the, the command prompt or terminal. See here also if I type Python demo.py, I see I am here in C users Pius desktop Python code folder only. Okay. And if I type Python demo.py, You'll see it is giving me same output. So I will be doing it like this. But you, if you have not integrated this in your system, uh, you can use command prompt to you can write your code in demo in Atom, and you can execute the files in command prompt. Okay. Uh, so we move ahead. So when installation is done, we have seen that we are able to execute the Python files with the help of this Python command. Now it's coding time. So what we'll do, we need to write a program that will print three messages. What we did right now is we asked the Python interpreter to print the sum of two plus three. But now I what this what uh, this program wants is it want me to print three messages. Welcome to geeks for geeks. Python is fun. And this is my first program. So what we'll do, we'll open, go to oh, this atom editor only here. Because I need to print messages, I will use the print function to print something, right? And the messages are generally printed in double quotes. You can see these double quotes, right? We will discuss about uh, these double quotes in more details in the later sessions, right? But generally, if you want to print a message, you will put it inside the double quotes. Okay. So I, my first message was welcome to geeks for geeks. So I print my message over there. I put my message in double quotes. Welcome to geeks for geeks. Okay. My second message was again, I need to, to, I need to print that message. So I'll use the print function. It was Second message was Python is fun. So I'll use Python is fun in double quotes, right? Don't forget to put double quotes. I have third print message to be printed, which is like, this is my first program. So again, I put this message. In double quotes again. Now I have to save the program. Because I have written the code, see, I have written the code in my demo.py, so I have not created a new file for it. I have written the code over here. I'll save my program. I'll go to command prompt. There I'll type Python demo.py. So I'll open the command prompt. You can switch to your command prompt. I'll type Python demo.py. Now you'll see whatever I've written in demo.py that will be executed and will be shown in the screen. See. I have printed three messages. Here I can see the messages. Welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Python is fun. This is my first program. So congratulations. We have written our first program and we have executed it with the help of Python command, right? So this is how you are going to do it. Whether you are using Linux, you are using Mac or you are using your Windows based system. But I told you when you are working on Linux and Mac based system because they by default uses Python 3, Python for Python 2. 
use python 3 command over there right if you are working on windows it's fine you can simply type python right so this was our first program in which we printed three messages on the screen i hope this makes sense now we will be performing more than this so when i showed you that this is ideally see when i showed you ideally ideally was python shell where i could execute python expressions or python uh, uh, commands right you can use ideally for this or you can open the command prompt and directly type python over here so whenever you open the command and simply type python now if i press enter you will see that same shell has been launched in your command prompt so you don't have to use ideally again and again you can be on the same command prompt and type simply python without the name of any file right so it will launch the python shell which will work the same way here also you can execute any valid python command right because i have integrated this with my atom i will be using here only Let me show you this is my command prompt i type python see whenever i type python the shell has been launched here on so it is the same thing whether you use ideally whether you use command prompt or i have integrated a command prompt it is the same thing same functionality i can see over here also right i hope you are getting this so what i can do is i can execute any valid python command on this python shell right so what we'll do we will use this python shell to execute to evaluate certain expressions right so we'll learn how we can evaluate expressions in python with the help of this shell so i'll share a small story with you with the and we'll try to solve that uh, the problem in the story on the python shell so suppose you were playing in the uh, in the garden and you found out 20 gold coins over there right you came back to your house very happily and you told this thing to your grandfather the grandpa i have found out these 20 gold coins in my uh, in the in the garden when i was playing over there so what your grandpa told you is that are it's really great i can produce more coins out of these 20 gold coins with the help of my magic machine so your grandpa has the magic machine which can take these 20 gold coins right so there were slots in which he fitted those 20 gold coins and started doing those abra kadabra thing right and what happened is in 15 minutes you saw that those 20 gold coins with the help of those 20 gold coins you were able to produce 10 new gold coins 10 magic coins were generated so this magic machine created 10 new coins from the 20 gold coins now the condition is this magic machine can only be used once per once in a day right in 24 hours you can use it only once to produce 10 more gold coins now the question is how many coins you will be have you will be having with you after one year so with the help of 20 gold coins you are producing 10 more coins every day right so how many coins will be there with you after 365 days or after one year right it's very easy we can simply write this i am able to produce 10 gold 10 magic coins right on so for 365 days i can write simply write 10 into 365 and i had those 20 coins with me which i actually found so these were my found coins these were coins i am generating every day for 365 days so this will be the total number of coins that i will have after one year right i hope this makes sense now see i can execute this instruction this this uh, expression over here also so i can write 10 coins were found wo 10 coins were generated and i am generating these 10 coins for 365 days so i have 3650 coins which i will be generating uh when i'm producing 10 coins every day right 
So in one year, I will be able to produce three six five zero coins. And twenty coins I already have, so I can write twenty plus three six five zero. It gives me three six seven zero. Now you need to note over here is when I am using multiply, I am using asterisk symbol, right? So in Python, if you want to multiply two numbers, you will be using asterisk. You can simply generate it by pressing Shift and Eight key. So if you use Shift Eight key with Shift, you will have this asterisk symbol over there. So I multiply ten by three sixty five to pro to see how many coins I will be generating in three sixty five days. After that, I will be I added the three six five zero coins. To the total to, to the initial number of coins, the number of coins that I found that was twenty. So I found out that after one year I will be having three six seven zero coins in total. I hope this makes sense. Okay. So we have figured out we have used Python shell to perform that particular mathematical computation. So you can use it for as your calculator as well, right? Now there is certain twist. What happens is. With the help of these twenty gold coins, you were able to produce ten gold coins every day. But there was a friend of yours who used to steal three gold coins every week, right? So you were producing ten gold coins every day, and the friend of yours was stealing out three coins, right? Three coins per week. Now. How many coins will be there with you after one year? Question is: When you had twenty gold coins, you are producing ten gold coins every day, and three gold coins were stolen per week, right? How many gold coins you will be having after one year? So we can say, initially we had three six seven zero coins, right? This was the number with us. Now, how many coins my friend will be able to steal? So we have fifty-two weeks with us. So if you you want me to compute this, I can say three sixty-five. This is the number of days in a year, and I divide it by. So this is the division operation. If you want to perform division operation, you can use slash, right? So three sixty-five number of days in a year divided by number of days in a week. Number of days in a week is seven. So it gives me five fifty-two point one something. So it is around fifty-two weeks we have in a in a year. So if I have fifty-two weeks and my friend was stealing, or friend was uh, trying to steal three coins every week, so he will be able to steal fifty-two into three coins in a year, right? So it is. My friend will be able to steal 156 coins. Total number of 156 coins in the year. I was able to generate 3670 coins, and he was stealing 156 coins. So total number of coins that will remain with me after one year will be 3514. Now you see, we perform addition, we perform subtraction, we perform multiplication, we perform division also in the on this Python shell, right? So this is how you can perform those mathematical computations on the shell, but you need to make you need to make sure that you are using asterisk for multiplication and the slash for division. I hope this makes sense. Okay, next we move to another thing. I need to write a Python program again. It's coding time. We will be writing Python program to compute this mathematical expression. So I need to write a program so that I can compute this expression: ten point five plus two into. So you might be seeing a lot of expressions like this on your mathematics textbooks, and we will be converting those textbooks formulas or textbooks equations. So we will learn how to solve those equations on with the help of Python shell, right? So I'll write a program for this. So I won't be executing. I can execute it here, but let us write in the form of programming. So in this demo dot py only, I will be using this. So I have to do ten c ten point five plus two into three. So what will do ten point five plus I'll use this symbol two 
then into three. Then for multiplying, I am using asterisk symbol like this. So I can write 10.5 plus 2 asterisk 3 for this thing. Now we have 45 minus 35. This is the denominator. So I'll write 45 minus 3.5, right? So I write 45 minus 3.5. This is my denominator. Now I had to divide this. So can I write it this way? 10.5 plus 2 into 3 divided by 45 minus 3.5. Can I write this way? This is wrong actually, because you know in mathematics, we need to evaluate numerator first, then we need to evaluate denominator first, then we need to perform this division operation. So what I can do is I can put them in brackets that actually you do in mathematics also. Do you know the first thing that will be evaluated is the bracket thing. So first the numerator will be evaluated, then denominator will be evaluated, then the division will happen, right? And I want to print this, so I will put it inside my print function. This is my expression. I have put the whole expression inside the print function, right? So this is the expression that I wanted to evaluate. And I have placed it inside print function. Now, if I'll try to run this, see, again, I launch the command prompt. I have to exit out this Python shell for this because I need to be on command prompt. Right now, when you see these three arrows, I was on my Python shell. Right now, I need to execute the Python code. So I'll type Python, P-Y-T-H-O-N, Python command, and then the name of the file, which was demo.py, because I've written my code in demo.py, so I'll type the name of the file. Don't forget to save your file before running it, because then you won't see the changes. You will see the previous code executing there only. So you need to save the file, then you need to ex run it or execute it. Now you see it is giving me the answer 0 0.39 something something. Your task is you need to perform this calculation on the calculator, right? You might be having those calculators in uh, on your home. Perform this calculation on the calculator and then verify with the answer. Right, it is 0 0.3975. So you might be getting some accuracy, 0 0.39790 something. So you need to verify your answer with this answer. Right? Okay. So this is how you can write down the mathematical expressions in Python. I hope I'm able to make it clear. Why have we why we have put this parenthesis? Because we want this numerator to be executed first, then this denominator to be executed, then this division operation. Otherwise, what would have happened because of that board mass rule that you know, the operator precedence thing, this division would have been performed first and we will never get the correct answer. Okay. Let's move to, let's, it's a simple quiz, right? So if I want to know whether the Python is case sensitive or not, so it is saying, is Python case sensitive? Case sensitive means when I write, see here, this print has been written with small p, right? Can I type it like this? Can I type it like this? So what I've done is I've written print with in uppercase. Now if I try to run this file, see this, it's not running. It is giving me error, which is print is not defined. This P R I N T is not defined. But when we are executing the program with print in lowercase, when I was writing it like this, it was actually to the Python was able to know it was not reporting me any error. It was able to execute this print statement. But when I written that in capital uh, or in uppercase, Python was giving me error because Python does not recognize this uppercase print. Python is able to recognize only lowercase print. So Python is distinguishing between the cases of in the case in which you are writing the statement. If you are writing them in lowercase, Python is able to execute. If you're not, if you're writing them in uppercase, Python does not know it, how to, what to do. So yes, Python is case sensitive. So we can answer it. 
So we know that Python is case sensitive because we have seen that when I was writing print in lowercase, it was able to execute. When I was writing print in uppercase, the Python was not able to execute this thing. Yes, Python is case sensitive. So we have next question. With what is the command to run Python source file? So we know all of you might be knowing this answer. We have used Python, then name of the file. This is the simple command. So we can run the Python source file with the help of Python and name of the file thing. So we can write simply Python and file here. So this is the command which can be used to execute the Python source file. Now it says identify and fix the error in the following code. So here you can see we have print which is written on the left hand side and this print is given some space and then we have written this, right? So if you'll see, we are printing a message which is inside double quotes. So it is fine. Here also we are printing some message which is inside double quotes. So let me try this, whether it's possible or not. I'm right, printing something over here and I'm giving some space, then I'm printing. If I run this, you see, it is giving me indentation error. Indentation, uh, indentation error means I have given some unexpected indent to this because this code has this uh, code that I was writing, the print statement has to be written over on the le extreme left hand side only. Right? So Python actually expects something else when you give indentation. We'll also see that why indent what will happen when in what case we can give indentation we'll look at look at uh, we'll look at it in further sessions but right now you we know that we cannot give indentation to our code we cannot give extra spaces in our code right so we save this program now if i run this after removing the indentation see it is working fine it is giving me correct results so this indentation, which is which we have given over here, it is unexpected indentation. So when you are typing your code, make sure that you are not giving any extra space on the left hand side of these print statements or the expressions that we are uh, evaluating. Right. Next question is show the output of the following code. It says three point five into four divided by two minus two point five. We need to find the output of this. So what I will do is I can simply write it right. We will simply type this. Let me type print over there. It was in double quote. See first expression is in double quote. 3.5 into 4 divided by 2 minus 2.5. So 3.5 into 4 divided by 2 minus 2.5 divided by 2 minus 2.5 it is saying is over here and the same expression over there is without double quotes if I you see this it is same as this 3.5 into 4 divided by 2 minus 2.5 3.5 into 4 divided by 2 minus 2.5. It is same, right? Now if I run this, you see it is saying 3.5 into 4 divided by 2 minus 2.5 is 4.5. So what you need, you, one thing that you need to note over here is this first expression, which is written inside the double quotes, was printed as it is, right? This expression was not even if I remove is from here, right? You'll see if I see this, if I run this again, okay, let me run this. It is printing the whole expression as it is 3.5 into 4 divided by 2 minus 2.5 because I have enclosed this whole expression inside double code. It is treating it as a message. It is thinking that I want to print this message. So it has printed it as it is. But the second print statement it has evaluated the expression, then it has printed the result. So you need to make sure when you want to uh, the expression to be evaluated, it has to be in numeric form. It should not be enclosed within double quote. 
But when we are enclosing in double quotes, it means Python understand it that way that you want to print it as it is. You don't want to evaluate that expression. So it's up to you whether you want to the expression to be evaluated or not. If you want to it to be evaluated, it should be without double quotes. If you want it to be printed as it is, it has to be inside double quotes. So it will be treated as a message and will be printed as it is. Right. I hope you got the idea of all these four questions. So it was there to boost our learning that things that we have learned in the uh, last few minutes. OK, so now comes is programming style and documentation. I'll just read this sentence. Can you read these two words proper and spacing? Can you see something is wrong with these statements? Exactly. This proper word has very less intra space spacing so very less intra uh, character spacing means every character is very close to each other it is like it should there should be certain space and this spacing word has more extra like inter character spacing right whenever we are having less inter character spacing and when we are having more inter character spacing in both the cases the readability is affected it becomes difficult to read the words right but you read this uh, sentence here you will see in both the words the spacing is very proper that means with the help of the spacing the proper spacing improves the readability and it is very important uh, when you write the code the spacing plays a very important role because your code will be read by you and someone else also, right? So you will be following the good programming style, which is the second one, right? You see, this one is also fine, and this this one is correct. Both that both of them will give you the same output. There is no different. There will be no difference in the output of the program, but the readability of this one. This is more readable. than the first one. That's why it is called good style of programming. You should be giving proper spaces whenever needed. Right. Again, I'm telling you it won't impact the output of a program. Your program will correct in both the ways, but it will improve the readability of the program. So proper spacing should be there so that your code will be readable for you as well as others also in your team. Now comes another thing which is very important before starting coding is comments. So comment is so I, I can explain you comments with the help of very easy example, right? So what happens is when you read your textbook, so this is your textbook, right? You are going through the text and certainly you find some word which is very difficult. What do you do? Whenever you are reading the text and you find a difficult word, right? You are not able to understand. You don't know the meaning of this word. Right? What, what, what do you do at that point? You will open up the Google on your mobile or you will open up the dictionary, right? You look for the meaning of that word and you will write it down over here only. You will write that word over there only with the text, with the original text, with some pencil or some temporary uh, writing thing. You can you will mark this. You'll write the meaning of the word over there only so that whenever you will read that text next time, right? You don't have to look for a dictionary again. You will find that difficult, the meaning of that difficult word over there only, and you won't have to open the dictionary. You will uh, be, con you will be able to continue the reading of your text. I hope this makes sense. Okay. So this hint that you have written over here is just like a comment. See, you can understand, you can call it as comment. Comment means this will, this, whatever you have written over there will not change the meaning of the text that was already written over there. So the, te the meaning of the text will not be impacted by what, by the thing that we, by the extra hint that you have written over there, the addition, additional hint that you have written over there, right? 
okay and whosoever you will give this book to anyone else he will also get the meaning of this world when he does not know it right it will help others also to understand the meaning of this world right so in programming what happens is you don't write two three lines of code you write thousands lines of code when you are developing software it is going to contain thousands lines of code and it is very easy it is it becomes very easy to maintain this code or for others also to understand and also for you to understand after writing thousand lines of code if you have to scroll up right and you want to check whether why i did, why did i wrote this line so it would be great if you mention some hint over there if there is some certain complex piece of code you should will mention some hint over there so when you scroll back scroll up uh, after getting like uh, after writing down thousand lines of code how thousand lines of code if you get back to that particular point you won't be missing it you will know with the help of this comment or hint that yes that's why i wrote this thing over there and anyone else will also if anyone else will also go through your code he will also be able to figure out that why you have written this particular piece of code got this so what we need to do is we need to uh, write those hints in a program also so that it becomes easy to understand for others as well as for us so we have different types of comments we have single line comments and multi line comments right i'll show you uh, how we write these single line comments in our program see so if your comment has to be single line only you can use this pound sign or hash sign and see if now i write write something print hello and here i write print welcome i see i have written two lines of code first line is preceded by this hash symbol and second line is the actual uh, is as it is we have not put any hash and all sim uh, any symbol over there right now if i'll save this program and try to run this program it is printing only welcome it is not printing hello because whenever i write hash before any line of code it becomes a comment it becomes a hint python does not execute that when i remove this see i'll remove this now if i'll try to run this python will execute this piece of line but when i put a hash over there python comes to know that it is a comment it needs it needs not to be executed it should not affect like similarly the way uh, the word, the hint that you wrote in your textbook does not uh, change the meaning of the text that was written in the book similarly the comment written in python code does not change the working of python code right it will simply print welcome it this will not impact the output of python code i hope you are getting this so this is when your comment is in single line if your comment has to be in multiple lines you can write i want this comment to be in multiple lines so what i can do is i can simply put hash before every line now you see these three lines are the comments and this the only single line will be executed now if i'll save this program and i run this it is printing welcome only so these are so you can see the color also it is grayed out which means it's a comment right there is another way you if you don't want to put these multiple hashes what you can do is you can simply put triple quotes like this a starting and triple closing quotes at the end now it has become completely green right you can see so 
before the starting of multiple line comments and after the ending of multiple line comments i put these triple quotes now again i'll see the output will be same it will not be impacted it will printing welcome only right so you have you can put single line comment using a hash or you can use multiple line comments either using multiple hashes on every line right or you can use these triple quotes at the starting or ending these triple quotes could be triple single quotes or these could be triple double quotes as well i can show you these could be triple double quotes as well but don't put a single and a double uh, see triple quotes could be triple double quotes so don't put a double and a single quote like this and it will be an error Don't try this. Either put triple double quotes or put triple single quotes. This is completely greened or grayed out. Okay. So now we know that how we can write comments in the program. Now I want you to know that why you should be writing comments in a program. Why? why i need comments in my program so let me give you an example see this is simple piece of code where i am writing 4 into 3 can you tell by seeing this code what this program is doing can you tell me what this program is doing some of you say that it is multiplying 4 by 3 and will print 12 right or you will say that it is performing multiplication of 4 and 3 right this is this is what you will do but if i tell you that i am actually calculating area of rectangle whose length is 3 and width is 4 whose length is 4 and width is 3 will it make sense to you area of rectangle is length into width right and i am doing length into width only so if i say i was trying to calculate area of rectangle you will never be able to because this statement is ambiguous this it is never saying that it is length, four is length and three is width right so if i would have mentioned over here now if i ask 100 people that what this program is doing they will actually they can tell that this program is calculating area of rectangle with length 4 and width 3 because it has been mentioned in the comments when they, when they will read the code they will able to figure out that yes it is calculating area of rectangle right if i ask 100 people 100 people will say the same thing because it is mentioned in the comments so comments helps you to improve the readability of the code right second thing now if i wanted you to change the length suppose the length of my rectangle change from change to 5 right now what now what you and someone else has to make this change in my program so i have written this program and i am out someone else will read this and if i ask him that change the length of the uh change the length of the rectangle to 5 right so will he be able to change the correct length yes because he know the length is 4 so he will change the 4 to 5 and here also he will make the change and the change is done but if this comment would not have been there would any would the second person be able to tell whether which variable has to be updated i need to update 4 or 3 which one is length i don't know because area can be calculated as length into breadth or breadth into length right so i don't know if i ask someone else to update uh if i ask someone else to update this variable right 
this length so he will not he will not never be able to figure out that whether i have to change 4 to 5 or 3 to 5 but when this comment was written he was sure that i have to update 4 to 5 because length was 4 only so comments helps us to improve the readability as well as the it helps us to make changes in the program i hope this makes sense now we move to another term which is called errors right we need to understand this thing and we will try to finish it very fast okay so can you read this word these two words first one is programming and second one is also something right can you read this actually this second word has certain error in it because it is not correct it there is no alphabet like this in english there is no character like this there is no character like this in english right so according to english syntax this uh word contains some errors now i need to figure out that what error it is if i need to fix this can i fix this yes i can because i knew that the word has been flipped out now you notice one thing i was able to fix this error because i knew that there was some error if i didn't know that there is certain error in the word would i be able to would i would i have ever tried to fix it no because we know that there was certain error then only we can fix those errors so our approach during this session by learning python is going to be destructive approach so we will teach you how the program will break first then we will teach you then you will learn that how the program can be made so instead of telling you the rules to create the program i will be telling you how the programs will be broken down right so the, the approach is going to be destructive approach and i hope because when you know what probable errors could be there so whenever you encounter a certain type of error you, it is very easy for you to fix that error right so destructive approach helps you to write errorless programs as well as whenever you encounter some error you know in advance that how to fix those errors right so we have different types of errors in i'll take one example and we'll, we'll try to explain with the help of examples so we have three types of errors syntax errors runtime errors and logical errors so syntax error is just like suppose in english i say is there is a there is a syntax to form a english sentence so there should be a uh, subject then there should be verb and there should be then there should be some object if you need to create a english sentence your uh, english sentence should follow this syntax this structure so he is a boy right if i write this if i write this it is a correct sentence because here subject then we have verb then we have object right so if i write boy he is a this is not a correct sentence because we know that it does not follow the syntax of english language right it does not follow the structure of english language here i am using object then subject then i am using verb which is not the correct sentence so i can fix this by rearranging them and creating a uh, the correct sentence so every language has a syntax and the sentence can be formed as per that syntax only so there is a structure that has to be followed similarly programming languages also follows a structure if you does not follow that structure that the interpreter will report you error i'll show you one example over here right suppose i type print i i want to print a message right i have already told you that it is mandatory to print the messages inside the double quotes okay. so if i run this program or simply run right somehow if if i somehow forgot to press uh, put this ending quote and then i try to run this program now it's see is giving me syntax error you can you see this syntax error 
syntax error means you are not following the syntax of the python programming language and python programming language syntax says this starting code needs to be followed by some ending code right see you can see the arrow it was expecting some ending code which is not there so that's why it reported you error when i put this ending code now if i run this it won't give me any error it's printing the correct because it has found the so python syntax says starting code should be followed by ending code which is not there so it says it gives you syntax error syntax error are very easy to remove because easy to figure out because python itself will report you that you are not following my syntax and here it is the error so it will tell you that particular line also so uh, syntax error are very easy to remove or figured out and fix actually then comes runtime error runtime errors generally occurs when your program terminates abnormally so when your program was executing very fine and at some point it stuck and when you the, when the python does not know what to do right? so what it done it terminates the program then and there only that type of error is called runtime error i'll show you i simply write print hello world and i want to print this suppose 10 times was three times right one and before after printing first print, uh, hello world i want to print something like this one divided by zero now you see division by zero is not defined in mathematics right similarly it is not defined in uh, for the programming language the, the the computer also so computer the python does not know what to do when the when division by zero happen so you will see program will be able to execute this print statement but when it come to come to this print statement it does not know what to do it does not know to divide any number by zero so it will leave the program here only it will say that it is zero division and i don't know what to do and it will leave the program then and there and it will terminate the program abnormally i must say when the program is completely executed it is termination of program normally but when the program is uh, exited in between then it is abnormal termination of the program now see now if i run this you will see first hello world is printed but on second line when it saw 1 divided by 0 it does not know what to do program doesn't know what to do when it, this so it reported you that it is zero division error this error is runtime error and uh, the python does not know what to do so it terminated the program there only there is no second and third hello world over there i hope this is making sense right so whenever you have error because of the the mistyping thing or you are you are not following the syntax of the programming language you will find syntax error which is reported to you whenever you have runtime error the program will be abnormally terminated in between right it will not completely execute and it will show you that why it exited in between so here it showed me that it is zero division error and exited in between only so it does not completely execute it third type of error is logical error logical error are very difficult to remove because here program will execute completely right there will be the, the program you you will run the program the program termination will be normal but it won't give you the expected output so this type of error generally happens suppose i want to compute the average of 1 2 and 3 so what i need to do i need to compute the average of these three numbers what i can do i can simply print 1 plus 2 plus 3 divided by 3 so i will do the sum of them and will divide by 3 right now if i run this it is giving me 4.0 whereas average of 1 2 3 should be 2.0 so the see the program executed completely program performed its execution and gave me some result but this result was not matching my expectation i was expecting 2.0 and it is giving me 3.0 right it is giving me 4.0 so when program executes successfully but does not give uh, the expected result then there is error there is some logical error logical error means it has been made by the programmer the error here is first of all i want to perform the sum to happen then i want the division to happen so it has to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 the result has to be divided by 3 but what we did 
1 plus 2 plus 3 divided by 3, which was an error, right? So now if I'll save this program, this 2.0. See, because I knew, now notice one thing, because I knew that I am a computing average, that's why I was able to figure this out, this error. If someone else will look into it, for him, there is no error in the program. He will never be able to fix that program because he does not know that what this particular line of piece of line is particular line of code is doing, right? So what we need to do is I need to, if I had a comment over here, see. Now, anyone who will read this program will be able to figure out that he's trying to compute average of one, two and three, but he's not, he's using the formula wrong way and he will be able to fix that error. Commenting will help us to remove the logical errors, someone else can remove the logical errors in our programs also, right? So that's why logical errors are very difficult. If you don't have comments in your code, it would be very difficult to remove logical because the program will be working fine, will not be reporting you any error, but uh, your the expected output is different from the actual output, right? So at last, I have a quiz and here I want to ask you that suppose you want to you write a program for computing the perimeter of rectangle and you mistakenly write the program so that it computes area of rectangle. What kind of error is this? You need to go to voting link for this, right? Go to voting link there you will see you can submit your solution over there. So if you are trying to compute the area of the you are trying to compute the perimeter of rectangle, but you mistakenly wrote the program to compute area. What type of error it is going to be? Okay, we are getting runtime error. Okay. Submit your solutions first. Okay. You are trying to compute perimeter, but mistakenly you have written a program to compute area. Will this error be reported to you? Will this error be reported to you? The program won't terminate at runtime, right? The program won't terminate at runtime. Program will execute completely, but it won't give you the expected result. You will, you will be expecting, you will be expecting the perimeter and it will be giving you it will be giving you the area, right? So it is going to be logical error because here program will not report you any error. Program is not going to report you any error, right? But your expected output will not be meeting the actual output. So majority of people are saying here, saying logical error, but those who are seeing runtime error and syntax error, please go through the video once again, once it's there. And also uh, when you have registered, you will be seeing those tracks right there. We will have quizzes also there. So you need to go through those quizzes. You will see the five questions. You will see the quiz and the uh, programming questions related to this session. So you can go through those quiz. When you complete those quiz and programming questions, you will be getting certificates at the end. Right. So you need to complete the quiz on the geeks for geeks website as well. So this was all for today. Tomorrow we will be discussing what is variable, why we need variables, what is the need of variables, how we can take inputs from the user. And then you will be solving pro programs also, and you'll be submit, you submitting those programs on uh, the geeks for geeks site. Right. So that's all for today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. You loved it. It was useful session for you people. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.